Hi, I bought this Evercade Premium Pack off eBay. Uh, I think it's probably one of the cheapest ones I've ever seen on eBay. Uh, I paid £16 for this. It was advertised as spares or repair. Um, apparently it does work, but there's lines on the screen. So hopefully we can repair it. Um, it looks like it's uh, cash converters that were originally selling this for around about £70. So I think uh, £16 uh, wasn't a bad price for it. So let's uh, take it out of the box. Right. So there it is there. And it came with uh, three games the instructions and a USB lead so all in all I think I got a pretty good deal if I can repair it right let's get this box out of the way now I did have a quick look uh, on YouTube to see how these come apart because I couldn't actually see any uh, screws on it and apparently you've got to heat up this front section here uh, so I've got a hair dryer here, so I'm going to heat up that section and try and get a one of these uh, pick sort of things under this edge and see if we can uh, lift this and then I think that reveals some screws underneath. Alright, I shall requisition my wife's hair dryer and uh, we'll see if we can uh, heat this up. Actually first before we do that, uh, we'll switch it on and we'll see what the fault is. Yeah, you can see some lines at the top of the screen there. There's probably about four or five of them there. So that's the problem with it. Uh, apart from that, it all appears to be working. So, right, we shall switch it off and see if we can get this uh, front plate off. Right, got that nice and warm now. Let's see if we can uh, prise this open somehow. Oh, it's just bending these picks. I do have a metal one. Let's try the metal one. I think I've got a few more of these. I'm going to get a couple more of them out. Alright, well, a little bit tricky, but uh, yeah, got that off. Alright, let's get these out of the way. And we have one, two, three, four, five. It looks like six Phillips screws. So the six screws removed. Now well, let's hold this together. at the top so I presume there's probably going to be a couple of clips down here as well perhaps I should take the cartridge out and probably help Oh, 
Right. And one of the buttons has just fell off there. Right then, so I say we've got a small connector here. So we'll unplug that one. And another connector here. So I think it's going to be the display that's going to be at fault with this. So I'm going to remove the battery I think next. Uh, and that's stuck down with a sticky pad by the look of it. See if that's stuck on the uh, the board that goes like on the main board, or if it's just stuck on this board, or if it's stuck on both of them. It's a little bit hard to see where it's actually stuck to. Yeah, I think we'll have to try and get that out of the way without puncturing it or breaking it. At least it's got some cell protection by the look of it. See those must be for the speakers. And if a bit of IPA down there would help loosen that off. Right, that's the battery out of the way. So what have we got now then? Looks like uh, two screws hold that main board in. I think I might need to take that one off first because there's a connector here and I don't think you can get to that without uh, without taking this part off first. So three small screws. And a button that's just popped off. Right, so it looks like there's just the two screws here now holding in the main board. Right, so I need to flip this that way. So this is the uh, the main board of the unit. Let's zoom down and we'll have a quick look at it. Like I said, I don't think the main board's the fault. I think it's more the display, but uh, we might as well have a look. See what we can see. Right, looks like there's some uh, SPI flash chip there. Uh, looks like some memory chip. That's probably the main. SOC system on chip which will be like for the um, the graphics and processor combined these bits here look like little power supplies for the different voltages along with that one there so there's probably four or five different voltages and like a five volts 3.3 1.8 1.2 or such that's what I would think um, looks like we've got a small zero ohm resistor there Probably where the power comes in, or near where the power comes in, I guess. Yeah, power comes in about here, so it's not too far out of the way. Alright, let's see how this display is held in then. Um, I can see it's held behind two clips at the top here. So it looks like you've got to undo the bottom of the display first, so I might have to take this board out of the way as well. I'm screw hiding behind the cable. Right, let's see if we can get this display out. Right, 
right so there's the display now I have ordered a display which is the same resolution and has the same 40 pin connector here of Ally Express. Uh, now hopefully it's compatible but obviously I'm not 100% because uh, I've never tried one of these before so let's uh, go get it and we'll have a look. Right, I'll just zoom out a little bit. So this is the screen that I purchased from Ally Express and I think it was £5. So let's have a look. And hopefully it's the same size. And it's got the same 40 pin connector. I mean it looks a very similar layout. So hopefully um, this one will do the job. Now I'll leave a link for this uh, in the um, video description if anybody else has got one of these and they want to replace the screen. Uh, it's just a standard screen so you know it's not an IPS one or whatever. Uh, I've, there was some advertised on Ally Express as IPS screens but they were about £45 and I thought well you know I just want to repair this thing I don't want to you know have it all bells and whistles and whatever so right let's see uh, how we're going to do with this then. I'm going to try and swap these bits of uh, sticky foam over. Maybe better if I heat these slightly actually. I'll tell you what, can I get this out of the way? I'll just move the another board over there and we'll try and maybe heat some of these up with the hair dryer. I'll just uh, zoom out a little bit. See if I can heat some of these up a little bit and uh, remove them. I'm not sure if the heat's uh, made any difference or not. Right, I'm going to take the protective film off this. Hopefully slide this one back in there. Right, I'll get this screen out of the way. So that should be that in place. Right, where about should this go? I think I'll put this uh, circuit board back in first. Just check all the buttons are in properly first. cable in there next door now.
right, I think there should be another screw somewhere. If I go in there. Now, where's that gone? So I've just been uh, hunting for the other screw there and stuck to the speaker. I thought there should have been another screw somewhere. Right, so that's uh, that back together so far. I need to try and get the battery back in. that connector to go in and I think then just these two connectors here There's a little button got to go in as well. Now this kind of just fell off, so I'm not sure how this actually goes in. Well, you've just got to try and line it up. something like that. Let's just see if it does anything when we turn it on now. Ah, I think we might have sorted it. No lines on the screen and it's showing the picture so it looks like the screen's compatible and it looks like it's working. Alright, I'll switch it off for now. We'll put the remainder of the screws back in. I think I'm not very happy as it looks like there's a little bit of glue just there. And get that out of the way. Alright, I'll put the remainder of the screws back in and we'll try a cartridge. Let's try and straighten this bit of glue out a bit so it's not a not a lump. screen which I think is glue. I'm just going to try a little bit of IP on that. Let's see if I can get rid of that uh, little bit of a mark in the corner. Give the uh, screen a little bit of a clean as well. All right, let's uh, give it a go. Dig Dug, I remember that one. Oh. 
Right then. Okay, what, should I zoom down a bit there so you get a better view? But, uh, yeah, all seems to be working now. Right then, I think we'll call this one a fix, so not too bad for uh, £20 just about in total. I mean there was a little bit postage to add on, so probably about £25, but seeing as it came with the um, the other two cartridges that are about £15 each just on their own, I think uh, not a bad deal at all. Right then, so there we have it, repairing an Evercade. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.